and welcome to Gulfstream today. I'm Katie Stazak here with track announcer Pete Aiello. It is Friday and it's Black Eyed Susan Day. We have a big nine race card of our own here. You can also watch and wager on the Black Eyed Susan. And we have advanced wagering for tomorrow's Preakness Stakes. That is all ready right now. And by betting $200 today, you can win an entry to win a possible free bet on the Preakness. So lots of fun stuff going on today. And you know what? You can win some extra cash because that Rainbow Six carryover, Pete, just continues to grow. Everything was covered yesterday. No singles. Almost $85,000. They bet quite a bit of money into this yesterday. Yeah, we, saw, we talked about it when we were doing the show yesterday. We had the two free squares. Uh, that both won. So as soon as they both won, and the other four races were just a formality. Um, so uh, I don't think you're going to have any as many free squares here today in the Rainbow Six. We had quite a few favorites, three favorites to open up the Rainbow Six sequence yesterday. Don't forget, we have nine races on the card today. So that means the Rainbow Six will begin in race number four, not race number three, as it has the past couple of days. So let's get right to our racing. Oh, we have a super high five carryover as well. Never want to forget that. Always a great, fun, challenging bet. And last yesterday's rain, uh, super high five was pretty tough. So I understand why nobody hit that one. But more than $5,000. And when there's a carryover in that, they always bet it up pretty good. It was strange yesterday because the top two in the wagering in the last race were both five to two. But the big sh long shots in the third, fourth, and fifth spots, you only needed the top two there. So uh, if you played the super high five, even though you missed, you probably made money on it just based on the top two. Yeah, very, very challenging bet. And uh, Wild finishes there with some long shots coming in to fill out those ladder spaces in the exotics. So let's get to this card today. We start the day this Friday with a $6,250 claimer. Phillies and mares, four-year-olds and upward, are going to be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. I think this was a first ever for me, Pete. My entire trifecta scratched out of this race. Scratched the two, the five, and the six. That happened to be my trifecta. I was left with the three on top. But, Pete, you went with the four. Tell me a little bit about horsing around. I actually went with, yeah, the eight horse, horsing around. Uh, I didn't have that exact theory. The top two of mine scratched, so I still backed into a horse that was in my top three, horsing around from the outside. The question here is you have Princess Appeal and Double Desert down on the inside that, based on form, look like the two best horses in here. However, they're both victims of a pace that now is going to be even more confusing with just a five-horse field. So the question becomes, do Double Desert and Princess Appeal have enough to run at where they can track down the speed? My hope is no, and based on that, I'm going to go with the horse that's going to be on the lead, horsing around. So let's talk about Princess Appeal. This is the one that I ended up putting on top with the scratches. Entering this race off a solid length and a quarter victory here on April 24th for trainer Jillian Andreessen. Made a five wide bid at the top of the stretch and just kept going. Thought that was a pretty nice effort. It's a limited sampling with trainer Andreessen. But she's won two of three starts with horses coming off a win. That's a 67% win clip, a nice statistic there. And this one is a four-time winner at the distance. And Pete, you also mentioned the one there, Double Desert. Yeah, they're both going to be victims of the pace. If you think they're the best horses and the pace won't matter, then by all means play them anyway. But for me, tactically, I don't like to be at a tactical disadvantage regardless. And I think in this case, you have to go with some tactical speed. So the other tactical speed horse has been off for a long time. The four dot those eyes has been laid up since November. But if there's another horse that has enough speed to get out early in front of Princess Appeal and Double Desert, I think that's who it is. So plenty of options there in the first race and might have to do some rearranging there with the scratches. But we'll take you right to the second race. and this No one rearranging needs to be done here. I think <laughs> we both agree on that. Yes. <laughs> the second race is a maiden special weight. Two-year-olds are going to be going four and a half furlongs on the main track. And it looks like trainer Stanley Gold has another top contender in this race. And from a pedigree standpoint, there's a lot to be excited about. The three, and that is Good Jeans, a full sibling to 2010 Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly Champion, Eclipse Award, two-year-old Philly Champion, Awesome Feather. 
also a full sister to Taran Feather, who just ran the other day here at Goldstream. So you get the polar opposites. You had Awesome Feather, who was an Eclipse Award winning grade one winner, and then you have Taran Feather, who's still a maiden. So the bottom line is, is that this horse just looks too fast for these horses. Draws the three post with his perfect. Carol Bio won on Eden's Garden yesterday, so there's no problem with that connection. Uh, you just There's nothing to fault this horse on, and I think that uh, this horse will be the winner. It's interesting to note, Katie, our morning line maker, Jay Stone, does a very good job, and it's a job that nobody here would want to do. <laughs> Takes a lot of guts to make a first-time starter 3-5 to five on the morning line. Good Jeans has a big-time hype coming in. Yeah, well, we'll see if Good Jeans can run to the Good Jeans that he has. Also a half-sibling to Brooks and Down, who just sired his first winner in Gold's first two-year-old winner of the year in Silent Prayer. Gold's looking to go four for four in two-year-old races with Silent Prayer, Fellowship, Eden's Garden, a runaway winner yesterday, and now has good genes. But Wesley Ward is back again to try to take him down. And I think this might be the best two-year-old that he's had here so far, and that's a moment is right. A daughter of Medallia Doro and the multiple grade two winning mayor, right moment, was a $190,000 yearling purchase. A Philly taken on the boys, but that's something Ward has done many times and has had success with. The works are very solid and gets a weight advantage with apprentice John Cruz in the iron. Yeah, that was what kind of confused me with uh, Ward reaching for the apprentice jockey on this horse. Being by Medagliadoro out of a Vicar mare, Vicar of course won the Florida Derby. Do we want to go four and a half is my question. And that's a good question. I rounded out the ticket with the six biggest drama from the first crop of 2010 Eclipse champion sprinter Big Drama, who's really become quite popular here as a sire in Florida. The yearlings have been selling very well. We'll see how they run. Turn in a bullet three for a long work to tune up for this start. And Harry Hernandez has been hot. Pete, you rounded out your ticket with the one awesome citizen. Well, I also used the five, Francesco Blue, who we haven't talked about yet. There was a time, and I'm hoping Larry Pilati listens to me and smiles at this, there was a time when it wasn't Stanley Gold and Wesley Ward that dominated the two-year-old standings in South Florida. It was Larry Pilati and Angel Sherman. Our Angel Salinas, I'm sorry, for Michael Sherman of the Farnsworth Farm. So Pilati knows how to get a two-year-old ready, and the owners, the Monarch Stables, certainly have uh, pre uh, precocious foals. And uh, I think Francesco Blue is the other horse that merits consideration here. Jonathan Gonzalez gets the call. His works have been okay. I trust Pilati to get it done. This is a situation, Katie, where you have to read better than the statistics. You're looking at a first start 0 for 8 for Larry Pilati. But if you've been around South Florida, you know that that's an anomaly. He can get them ready. Absolutely, and if you look at his overall win percentage, he's won races left and right during this meet, so definitely still hot, even though the numbers with the two-year-olds right now, per se, don't match up with that. So we'll go right to the third race, and this one is a $10,000 maiden claimer. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. I use the five. Pete also has the five on his ticket. That's gotcha key, but Pete... In this race, you went with the three, but I believe that one scratched. So we'll talk about the five gotcha key. This one, going to give her another chance after she weakened to fifth as the favorite in her last start on April 26th. Finished second, beaten just a half length each time in each of her previous two starts at the level. I'm expecting a rebound performance. Obviously, the last race is a little bit of a concern, but Tyler Gaffleone's going to be in the irons for trainer Michael Petro. The three is running. The four is the horse that's been withdrawn. Bella Forever is out. Three Bright Lady does go here. Okay. And I like her on top. Luca Panici rides for Pete Wazilek Jr. You see this horse is improving rapidly. Ren last, the debut run at Tampa, stepped up was an absolute lunatic on the racetrack, got loose in the pre-race. They still let the horse run, ran okay under Janelle Campbell. This is a huge rider switch. This horse is well spotted for the debut run, and I, uh, in South Florida, that is. And I think that the price will be right because the people will go to Gotcha Key yet again, and uh, he, she's not proven reliable so far. My apologies there. Noted the wrong scratch. So the three bright lady will run. The four Bella Forever is the one that is out. I also have the six on the ticket, Pam Pam, who has shown some relative consistency as of late for trainer Gilberta Zerpa. She finished third in each of her last two starts at the level. Her only real bad race, per se, since her career debut came when she tried the grass back in February. Not on the grass today. The only concern is can't get into a speed duel up front. There is quite a bit of speed in this race, so we'll see how 
that pace develops. It's kind of a rock and a hard place situation for both Gotcha Key and Pam Pam in the sense that they both have quick first gears. They do their best running on or near the lead, but if one of them defers to the other, then they've sealed their fate. If they go at it with each other, they've sealed their fate. So the question becomes, if you're a jockey here, what is your move in the early part of this race? So let's go on to the fourth race now. This one is a $16,000 claimer. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, which have not won two races, will be going a mile on the turf course. And this race does begin the Rainbow Six today with a nine-race card, so make sure you take note of that. Watch the first three races, see how the surfaces are playing, and then get those Rainbow Six tickets in. So before we talk about the horses in this race, we're going to go back and show you a race replay, and this is from April 23rd. It's a $16,000 claimer, same level as this, and we're going to be looking at the eight horse in this particular race, and that is Shiloh, who was making a nice run as of late, but then ran into some trouble. Going to see Shiloh lacks racing room in deep stretch. Going to have to steady and completely alter course, see nowhere to go, altering in and out, and then going to finish fifth, but only beaten a length and a quarter. Think this one should really move forward with a better trip. She does her best running at this distance. Her lone career victory came at a mile, and three starts back, she just missed by a neck going seven and a half furlongs. I really like the turn back from a mile and a sixteenth. And again, Harry Hernandez is going to be aboard this time for trainer Jenna Antonucci. The other horse that was in that backtrack is my top play, the five horse, Danube River, finished third in that race. Maybe made the lead a little too soon for Jonathan Gonzalez. They switch it up to veteran rangeman Pedro Cotto Jr. here today. Pedro's come over from Tampa after wintering in Louisiana at Delta Downs. Very, very underrated rider. We've not seen much of him yet. So I think that uh, Danube River is a viable alternative to Shiloh, who is the horse to beat in here. And having talked to Terry in the jocks room, he likes this horse's chances. The 8 was another horse that I threw on the ticket. And I think when this could be a little bit intriguing, I really like the connections in Tyler Gaffleone and trainer Alejandro Mamo. This one is entering this race off her maiden breaking victory on April 29th. A really nice two-length score at the distance, but it was on the main track. Finished fourth, but only beaten two lengths on the grass two starts back, and actually earned a better buyer speed figure for that effort than she did in her win on dirt. So that might say something about her turf form to you. I think that this is a nice spot for her, and we'll see how she translates with the surface switch. But Pete, you also used the seven Pinsy's Prize on your ticket. Yeah, first time on the turf course here today. Stretches out around two turns for the first time. Juan Leva, Bill Kaplan, out of price. This race is a race that, for me, has more questions than it does answers, so I'll try to get a little value. On to the fifth race we go, and this will begin the pick five today. This is a $75,000 maiden claimer. Three-year-old's going to be going seven and a half furlongs on the turf course. We have a field of seven. I went with the one, Little Chris A. Pete, you went with the two, just to my outside, and that is Little Comma. Yeah, I think this is a good betting race, Katie. This is the first leg of your pick five wagers. I think there's some depth here. We only have a seven scheduled to go postward, but all seven of them appear to be have a, have a shot here. Uh, I'm kind of a mark for Mike, Michael Yates, especially when he runs horses over the tr uh, turf course first time out, and that's the situation with Little Comma. Jonathan Gonzalez sees fit to have the call here today. That's quite all right with me. I think this horse might be forgot about in the wagering, and I trust in Michael Yates to have him ready to rock and roll, going seven and a half furlongs over the turf. He did have a debut winner on turf just a few weeks ago. So the value for me is Little Comma, but this is a race where there's a lot of depth. A lot of depth. I went with the one little Chris A, who I thought took a really big step forward in his last start. It was just his second career start. Stretched out to this distance of seven and a half furlongs. Dropped down to the maiden claiming ranks for the first time for trainer Carlo Vaccarosa. Deal, dueled for the lead the entire way around and was just outdone by a length at the wire. The winner that day got a perfect ground-saving trip along the rail and came back to run a strong third in his first start against winners last time out. The third-place finisher, Dreamy of Frank, came back to break his maiden in his next start. So I think this could become a bit of a key race, and that's why I had to put the one little Chris A on the top of the ticket for trainer Carlo Vaccareza. But the common thread within our picks, we have a, a few different horses here. The common thread is the three, Boca Scuttlebutt. 
Yeah, Boca Scuttlebutt was installed as the 2-1 to one morning line favorite. He's certainly facing the best company. You see Ulysses, Cordero, Force the Pass, Weekend Express. You see all these horses that are either uh, on their way to doing good things or in the case of Force the Pass, have already done good things by being a stakes winner. The key with Boca Scuttlebutt is that he has tactical speed. The problem is, when it comes to crunch time, he has tended to, a tendency to fold up shop, so he made the bottom of my ticket. Well, the last time he ran for a tag, it was in a $100,000 mating claimer back in January. He finished second. I think that it's good that he's dropping back in for a tag, and this is company that he fits better in because Pete mentioned he has run against some very nice horses. Even in that $100,000 mating claimer, he finished second to a horse named Moon over Cusco that came back to win again in his next start. The other horse in the past performances, it's a knockout winner of the Fountain of Youth that just ran in the Kentucky Derby. So lots of class here will not have to face the likes of those today. Definitely one that you ha should have somewhere on the ticket. I finished out my ticket with the six over the limit. Pete finished up his ticket with the five Imperial Ben. So we'll take you to the sixth race and this one is a 25 to $30,000 claimer. Four-year-olds and upward are going to be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. I went with the eight Tiger Bourbon. Pete also has the eight on the ticket. We actually have the same three horses here, so maybe this race will be a little bit easier. Won't have to go quite as deep as maybe in some of the other legs of the Rainbow Six. Tiger Bourbon, really a consistent gelding, but he's looking for a breakthrough win. He's finished second in four of his last five starts for trainer Jose Garofalo. Faded to second after dueling for the lead in his last start on April 29th. That was actually over a sloppy main track when his scheduled race was taken off the turf. In his last turf start, he was only beaten a half-length Padilla by Padilla, who's a pretty nice horse at the level as well. Tyler Gaffleone's going to stay aboard. And I don't think there's a whole lot of speed in here, and I think he could be in control of this race throughout. Well, it's a situation where how many two good races does he have in him? He's fired every time. No reason to think that he's not going to fire here this afternoon. Act of Madness, I actually thought he read really, really well last time, talking about Tiger Bourbon, because I thought Act of Madness was about as big a cinch as there was, and he only won by two. Tiger Bourbon kind of gave him a threat turning for home. And then the horse that you talked about, Padilla, Padilla came back to run huge on the main track on the raise off the claim the next time he ran. So the company lines are solid, the form lines are solid, and he will take uh, a lion's share of the action. You ended up putting the five, though, on the top of the ticket. Tell us about Dusty Moore. Dusty Moore is a horse that goes out for Gustavo Delgado, and I'm starting to think that Gustavo's been targeting some of these summertime racing season because his horses are firing big time. He won two races the other day. He won at least one yesterday. I want to say two again yesterday. Uh, Dusty Moore has Eddie Castro riding him this afternoon. He's a three-time course winner. All of his success has been on this turf course. He comes out of the same race as Tiger Bourbon does. I draw a line through it. He doesn't want to run on the main track. He's a turf horse, and he seems like he's a horse that is headed in the right direction for a trainer that is also headed in the right direction. Again, another horse that might just need a confidence boost, that really needs a breakthrough win, and he has tons of back class. He's twice been stakes placed, so definitely a logical horse. And then we both used the four, Tail of the Heart. This one dropped back down to the claiming ranks after making a strong rally to get up for third in a $25,000 optional claimer on May 2nd. That's for trainer Angel Medina. Came running late to close from five wide and get up for the show. Jose Alvarez going to retain the mount. My only concern, a bit of a quick turnaround. Yeah, and Tell of the Heart did come rolling last time, I can tell you that. And the, that race, uh, it formed out pretty well. Easement was a sharp winner for Fernando Abreu off the layoff. And Whisper on the wind looked home and cooled and got nailed by that horse. So the race, uh, it forms out pretty well against these. All right, on to the seventh race. This is a $35,000 maiden claimer. Three-year-olds and upward going to be going seven furlongs on the main track. Scratch the three, where's my sock? I went with the one, wow, completely different here oh, in our that selection. That was my smile. That was what my smile was for. Pete loves that. I went with the one, El Guer River. This is a son of Quality Road. Making a few moves today that I think should help him. Going to add blinkers after making a brief inside mood and hanging in his last start on April 30th. Finished third. I think those blinkers should help keep him a little bit more focused and sharp. He's also stretching out in distance and dropping to a career low tag. Enrique Sanchez is the trainer. Going to have Josie Gomez in the irons once again after she piloted him to his first in-the-money finish last time out. Pete, 
You went with the five. Tell us about St. Thaddeus. Well, I actually went with the three, where's my sock, but he came out, so I backed into the I five. I had that St. one on the ticket as well. Yeah, St. Thaddeus is the top play for me. He dro uh, drops in class here today. Second start off the freshening for trainer Terry Pompey. He tried the turf last time out. He was in range and just couldn't kick on. Uh, I think he's better situated from a pace standpoint here today. I think this is a pretty substantial drop in class for him today. And Jonathan Gonzalez is always a, a reliable opportunity when he has a horse that has speed. So I'll look for St. Thaddeus to be forwardly placed in here. And that's good news because there's not a whole lot of speed in here. I closed out my ticket with a pair of Mickey Kroger trainees, put the two in second, that's wild praise, making the turf to dirt move today, and this one again, class comes into play. He's run against Tougher, and the last time he ran for a tag on the dirt, he finished third behind a horse named Bold Summit, who would come back to win his start next start as well. Other winners that he's run against in his last three starts include Tony Adams from the Tom Albertrotti barn who was so impressive and just demolishing the field in his career debut as well as a horse named Eduardito who came back to win yesterday. He won two in a row, Eduardito Sharp and Tony Adams Sharp. Company lines are very, very good for, for that horse that you were talking about there. You also have the four Harlan's Glory. Yeah, first time starter trying to go with a fresh face here the, for many crews and trainer Lars Beck de Lamont. We don't, haven't seen much of Lars running first time starters, so the jury's still out on whether he cranks them up. But I think that this horse finds a good spot to land uh, to show some uh, ability here today. And again, I don't think he'll be uh, on the top of a lot of folks' tickets. So I'm trying to separate myself in the multi-leg exotics here. Good idea, especially if you want to hit that rainbow six. We cap the tickets with the nine and the seven, respectively. Lots of options again there, but let's go to the eighth race. And I really like this race. This one's an allowance with an optional claiming tag of $62,500. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, are going to be going a mile and a sixteenth on the turf course. There's some pretty nice Phillies and mares in here. I think this is a very competitive race. And we're going to go back and show you the last race of my top selection, Pete Hazer in second, and that is Lemon Lashes. This is from April 15th, another allowance. And this is Lemon Lashes making her first start in 18 months. She hadn't run since October of 2013, and here she comes running. Angles out from the rail, makes a four-wide bid, and is going to score a one-and-three-quarter length victory. Runs down a nice group of fillies and mares, and I thought this was so impressive coming back from so much time off. Should logically run even better today from a fitness perspective. Eddie Castro is going to stay aboard, and clearly this is a talented mare. The connections must have thought highly of her to elect to keep her in training on try to make things work with so much time off and trainer Marty Wolfson wins at a 27 percent clip with horses making their second start back from layoffs longer than 180 days. All the statistics point to the fact that she will be better than she was last time. She doesn't need to be better than she was last time, but she has to be as good to beat a talented field here. That's why she didn't make the top of my ticket. I'm not completely sold on getting two huge races off such a long layoff. So that's the rub with this filly, if she, or mare, I should say. If she's ready to go, she's the one to beat again, and she probably wins. But she doesn't have a whole lot of room for error. So tell us about your top selection. That's the six, Charlie A. Charlie A., you have to excuse her last race. Michelle Nehi does very, very good work. She takes her time with her horses. Her always, horses always look well and always run well. Rider changed this afternoon. Goncalves is gone. Panici picks up the call. Sign me up for that. I'm a big Panici fan on turf. Charlie A. is a horse that uh, has put together some races in the past that have been just fine. Uh, I like the fact that this is now the second start in just a couple of weeks for this filly. I think she must be doing better to be uh, back so soon. And I think she's a viable alternative if you're trying to beat the favorite. We both also used the three Jackie's daughter. And this is another filly that has some ability. She's contested a few stakes for trainer Mike Maker and was an impressive winner last time out when she scored by two and a quarter lengths back on March 19th. Should be fresh for this start and have to respect the connections. Edgar Prado's going to ride. He rode her last time in the Tropical Park Oaks. Well beaten in that race, but what a key race that has become. Finished behind next out winners in Sandiva, Dancing House, Pink Poppy, and Granny Mix Kitten. That right there is five next out winners. That's a pretty impressive race coming out of there. Yeah, Jackie's daughter figures big time. Got to give a little shout out to the mayor, Super Jackie, who was always a very honest campaigner here in South Florida. We'll move on to the last and final race of the day, and this has that super high five carryover going to get pretty big, and we'll see if this one can prove as tough as yesterday's super high five was. I went with the nine. I feel great. 
hoping he feels great today. Took the lead at the top of the stretch and just missed in his last start on May 2nd. He was beaten very, very close, just a neck. He's been second in each of his last two starts. Seems to have found his niche at this level and distance on the grass and won't have to improve that much to get a win. The only concern, again, is the quick turnaround. Pete, you went with the five, and that one is Cool Blue Moon. Yeah, it's a family affair. Let's go with the Fuller family. Abby Fuller is the owner of this horse. That is the same Abby Fuller, as you remember, riding races throughout the last couple of years. Uh, her uh, daughter trains the horse. Her son rides the horse. Cool Blue Moon is a horse that ran very well in debut run. Race was not exactly strong, but the winner of that race was also a first-time starter, so it's tough to gauge just how good the race was. I like the fact that the horse ran well first time out. I'd have to imagine, if not talking to Abby, but just knowing her uh, as a person, that she's not one to crank them up first time out. So the horse ran well, brings the jock to town. Of course, the jock happens to be her son. But it's a family affair here. Gets around two turns for the first time. Tries the grass for the first time. Pedigree says that should not be an issue. And I look for this horse to run a pretty good race here today. Well, we'll see if we have a uh, fuller family celebration there in the winter circle after this race. Pete and I have given you plenty of options for the super high five. Looks like the only, com only common thread is the one. That is Mart Vino. But, uh... That's going to wrap up our nine race card, and we have a great carryovers again in the Super High Five and the Rainbow Six. Pete's going to stay on and update you on any additional changes and scratches that he has for today's card so you have everything straight for your handicapping. Don't forget, you can get your advance wager in for the Preakness tomorrow. You want to make sure you get your bets in early so you don't get shut out tomorrow because it's going to be busy. There's a big race tomorrow, and uh, we'll see if we can move one step closer to maybe having another triple crown winner in American Pharaoh. So we have the Black Eyed Susan today as well. Come out, watch, wager, live racing, racing across town, across the country. We've got it all here at Gulfstream. Best of luck to you and enjoy. Good luck to the horses in the Black Eyed Susan from South Florida, Danessa Deluxe and Divine Aiden with Jesus Rios. Go get them, guys.